What's up everyone? We're finally back for some more footy content in 2024. It has been quite some time, but I am back from my trip. So I'm finally able now to get some genuine footy content out ahead of the footy season, which is honestly not that long away. I think just like four weeks. So it's, it's getting around the corner and you can tell with my channel at the moment that I need the footy content to come back because the views aren't the greatest. Today, what we're going to be doing on the channel is going through all the new kits ahead of the 2024 season, which may include new away or clash kits or some more subtle changes, such as like the difference of the, uh, the collars or the cuffs. I know UCAT did something pretty similar last year for the 2023 kit, so a bit of a credit to him. But let's get straight into it. We'll start off with Adelaide, a club that I think did a pretty good job in 2024. I'm not too sure how many people are aware of this, but uh, yeah, Adelaide, one of the biggest changes of all clubs in this video. For their clash kit this year, they have brought back their iconic kit that they had in 2008 to 2009. I don't really know what you call it. I guess the Crow's tri-color design. That's what I'd call it with the Crow. And I personally really like that Guernsey, the look of it. It's one of the best Guernseys that not only the Crows have ever used in their history, but also the be one of the best Guernseys I think any club has ever used. I would have had it really high when I did that ranking Guernseys video a few years back. When you see the 2024 kit, it's a bit more simplified, particularly to the 2008 kit. So they've dropped like the tri-panels and the panels coming from the side. So it's pretty much just the blue Crow, white on one side, red on the bottom. It's going to be primarily a red kit. And also with the uh, 2024 kit, the uh, eyes and the beak are colored in red and yellow as opposed to white. Um, I'm actually quite surprised when I found out that this was only used for two years back in the past because it feels like it's a lot more symbolic and iconic of what Adelaide were back in the day. The crow is also slightly enlarged, so you could argue it looks better, honestly. Uh, we yet to see what it looks like with the other uh, crows running out, but I think it would look pretty cool. The crows have also brought back their gather round kit as well for 2024, which is uh, good on them, honestly, for the crows going different. Not many teams do that. They don't really seem to give a crap about, you know, making new guarantees, particularly for gather round. But yeah, the gather round kit's pretty much the same as last year. Apart from the fact that I guess for all the kits this year for the Crows, the O'Neill sponsor logo, they've actually added a design on top apart from just the O'Neill's text. So let's take a look at the Bombers. Uh, the Bombers have also gone out with a new Clash kit this year, but unlike the Crows kit, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, particularly not as much as the Adelaide one for sure. But it's something different to be fair. Uh, as you can see, there are two black sashes as opposed to just like a red sash. It does still leave a little bit of red in the middle and that's because of the fact that their club's constitution, which was written over a hundred years ago, states that they always must wear a red sash as part of their kits. So technically that gets away with it a little bit because the red's in the middle, so it's technically a red sash. It kind of looks crappy. I think it looks better just having what they had last few seasons with a red sash and a red background or even like pick another color. I know it might look bad, but I'm not a big fan of this one. I thought the last few were, were quite a bit better. And there's also a decent chance if you look at the indigenous kits for Eston, this isn't really confirmed, but I've been looking at Reddit and Bigfooty and there's a decent chance that what the Bombers use as their 2023 Indigenous kit for their AFLW team will probably be similar to what they use, if not the same, for 2024, the Dreamtime games. Apparently, it's been sort of implemented the last couple of seasons. I thought that was actually a pretty good kit, but clearly the Bombers actually can't have this one because, as you can see, the stripe's black. So it's different for the AFLW side. What they're going to have to do is probably just inverse it. Hawthorne have also done something different with their kits in 2024 for their um, sort of their Legends kit. I don't really know what they call it. I think the Michael Tuck Legends Guernsey is what I've been told it's called. And I, I like this kit quite a bit, actually. I like the look of it. It's definitely a, a more retro, classic look of the kits that the Corks have used compared to like like 2023 because as you can see 2023 it was a different v a much shorter v which didn't really go down too much as opposed to the v for the 2024 kit which looks a lot more similar to their original design they had in the 1920s you've got the v actually going over the shoulder this time and going down quite far into the kit almost like halfway through they've also added the hfc emblem next to the v as well so a lot going on to be fair more than last year's but it looks cooler or at least is more symbolic to i guess the hawks um history in a way. Obviously the overall design stays kind of the same, but the uh, the V's different. They've added the HFC and it's more symbolic to their past. So I think it looks better overall, um, but let me know down below what you think. Do you think the 2024 kit's better or do you prefer uh, the more simplified V? Now this one also was pretty shocking. I had a look through the Suns kits on their website and along with their blue cash guernsey, the Suns are now going to have a new away kit for 2024. Teams don't normally have an away kit clash kit and a home kit they'd more do that like in the soccer i think more afl teams should do it because it would give the fans a chance to buy a new kit ahead of the season um, and this is a nice one i actually really like it it's an indigenous painting of a sun on a bit of like a yellowy red gradient so it's not just on a plain red back it's sort of got a bit of a gradient which sort of differentiates itself from the 2024 home kits but i like this one it looks really cool and unique and definitely one that i think a lot of collectors would buy and with you know a lot of the 
people getting around the Suns as the last couple of years. This is one I could say a lot of, you know, Victorian-based um, supporters, you know, buying or just people that don't even support the Suns in general. Uh, but I, I did say it initially. I'm like, surely this is just what they're going to have as their Indigenous kit. Clearly it isn't, at least according to the website. So... Yeah, it's classes of their away kit, which I find is quite interesting. And I think the Suns have also got a new sponsor. Last year, the Suns had Plungy on their kits. It's a company I've never heard of in my life. And in 2024, it looks like they're going to have LXXP. Now, looking at North now, they seem to change their Clash kit every year now, it seems. Like, genuinely, they had a new one in 2021, 2022, 2023. And now, 2024, they've decided, you know, let's change it again. Puma love to change their designs every other year. And they've returned... Back to the classic bounding kangaroo design. A design I think that they just need to keep for at least five years. It's sort of similar to what they had in 2023. If you saw their kit last year, they had stripes underneath um, the kangaroo with a white top. Whereas the kit they have this year resonates and is a lot more similar to what they had in the late 90s. I think it looks better realistically. Like the last year's kit didn't look too bad, something different. But I think just North need to stick with this one for quite some time. They don't really need to change it because it looks good. But North do have a lot of nice designs, I think, in the past. And speaking of nice designs as well, North have announced this year that they're going to be introducing a retro kit this season. I'm not too sure if it's going to be like a fan vote or if they're just going to pick themselves. But I've been told it's going to be most likely a blue kit. So of all the old classics that I've had a look at, It'd be nice to see the 2004 kit be brought back, honestly. Um, I don't know if the North have ever used that kit since then. It would be nice to see what it'd be in 2024. Now, another side to introduce retro round kits for 2024 for the first time, it looks like, are the cellar dwellers as well, the other ones in the Eagles. And just like the Hawks and the Dogs did, more teams are now starting to introduce retro round kits. Uh, they gave their fans the option to vote for one of, you know, a few Guernseys this time round. The uh, Eagles have two kits to vote for, so let's have a look at what the two kits are. I've got the original OG 1995 Navy kit, and then the early 2000s Orca kit, uh, which is honestly a bit of a love-hate relationship with that one. Some people love it, some people hate it. I would prefer to see the latter, though. I think the Orca kit would look really nice with some of the new sponsor apparels as well. That would look pretty cool as well. Seeing Harley Reid run out in that kit, you know, in his first year, that would look really nice. It'd be quite iconic. The Blues, in my opinion, have also improved their away kit this year with a new design. They've dropped, in my opinion, what was the ugly white emblem with an outline um, on a white kit because they had the uh, the white logo with like, I, I feel like it just was a bit cartoonish what they had in 2023, but they've decided to go back to what they've had sort of similar in, in previous years with the blue emblem at least. And they've also added a thick navy blue strip up the top. I, I realistically don't think they need to do that. I mean, it, it's fine, but I think it looks better if it's just completely white with blue. Keep it simple. That's what Carlton sort of do best. I don't mind it too much. I think it's better than last year's kit. So it'll be interesting to see them run out in that this year. Collingwood, of course, as well. They've got new Guernseys for this year for all their home and away kits. I think it's just actually home, it might be. Um, of course, just having the gold AFL logo, considering that they'll premiers in 2023. A lot of Collingwood fans will be wanting to buy the kits in 2024 with a gold logo. It just There's just something about the gold AFL logo that just looks a whole lot more appealing. Yeah, this will look really sleek alongside the Nike apparel kit. Collingwood's kits... Whilst they're basic, they're pretty nice. The D's have also made a slight change themselves to their home kits for 2024 by adding the MFC emblem below the sponsor apparel to their kits. So not many teams actually add their logo to the kits. I know St Kilda or Geelong, there are a couple of sides that do it, but the D's are going to add their emblem to the kits this year. And they haven't done this for 10 years. 2014 was the last time they added their emblems to their kits. In my opinion, I think it's a better look, to be honest with you, particularly Melbourne, a, a rich club with a lot of history. Adding the emblem to the Guernsey, I think so. it's a good look, to be honest with you. The line's also a bit of a subtle change in 2024. Their Fitzroy red-inspired kits that they do wear in Melbourne, they wore into the grand final. Instead of having a gold collar and cuffs, which they had in 2023, 2024, they're going to have blue collar and cuffs. I don't really think too many people are going to be jumping out of their sofas watching this video going, no way, there's no way they changed the color of their collar and cuffs because it doesn't matter. But I think, oh, overall, I think blue looks a little bit nicer than gold, but you know, it's each to their own with that one. Richmond, another team to make a slight change as well. I'm uh, not too sure if many people have actually picked up on this, but throughout their entire history of them wearing their yellow clash kits, which I think look really nice, better than their home, the, the back of the kits don't have a sash. It's just purely yellow with the numbers. And in 2024, it looks like the black sash is gonna be first added to the back of the kit. I saw it on an Andy Munro TikTok, so credit to him. And also, thank you to Andy Munro for putting this one out. I couldn't really see it anywhere else online. It looks like the Swans, through some sort of a leak, decided to finally make a change to their Indigenous Guernsey. I mean, I've been ranking Indigenous kits for, for quite a while now, for the last three or four years. I don't think I can remember the Swans ever having their 
kit any different from the last four years. It's always been the same. And the longer that the Swans have gone on using the exact same kit, the more it sort of gets boring and fades out and people start to not like it that much because all the other teams seem to change their kits every year. It looks like this year the Swans finally decide, you know what, enough's enough. We're going to change the look of our kit. And as you can see, it's an inverse of the colors. I think the first time they've ever gone an inverse where the yoke is white and the red is at the bottom and it's almost cooler maybe because we haven't seen it before a new swan in the middle with the sydney harbour bridge i think it looks cooler than the uh the one that they used last year maybe because they've used the line last year that many times st kilda always go with a lot of different away kits but unfortunately this year i think they've gone with a downgrade of what we had previous years with their clash kits unfortunately they've dropped the hot cross bun design i don't think they needed to do that at all because i think it's really iconic to st kilda it looks good it's sort of a symbolic to the club you see that guns you know it's st kilda and you can't really replicate that with any other clubs but they've decided nah you know what some boring old corporates going back to the the plain away kits which we saw back in the day i don't really know i think 2016 it's the same as the home kit if you look at this photo you'd have to take a second look to see if there's any differences realistically because it's the same kit instead just with a white back instead of a black back and yes it works as an away kit like people will be able to identify that they're wearing their away kit it's just really boring i, I don't really want them to go back to the the, uh, the boring old design. I think they had this in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, something similar, but I think this is one of the more boring St Kilda Clash kits we've seen ever in the history. So not a big fan of this one. I feel like if it's broke, don't fix it. And uh, you can take a look at St Kilda's kits for this year as well, for both of them. And you can finally see that they have a new apparel sponsor. So last year they had nothing, which was a bit surprising. This year they've got Cherry. They've also brought back the Saints to their iconic emblem that they've had for so long. Uh, last year there was a 150th year, so it was a little bit different, but they're back to the 2024 with the iconic emblem, which probably tells us that they're not gonna change their logo for 2024. I think that's pretty much a given. I thought maybe in 2023, the Saints were gonna go for something new, but this is the longest surviving logo of any club in history. Like it's been around for so long. But that'll wrap things up today for this video. Let me know if I've missed any club kits. Obviously, as time goes on, there'll be more leaks for some of the, particularly the indigenous kits. If you enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, feel free to not only like it, but also subscribe because in February, we are wanting to try and reach 32K subscribers. It's been a bit of a slow grind the past few months, subscriber-wise, so hopefully with some more footy content over the next three or four weeks, or well, at least this month, um, we can help the subscriber count go up. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon in my next one.